The way Donald Trump handled classified information gives new meaning to the term toilet paper. <laughs> but let's talk some more about Hillary's emails. Welcome to Momocrats Mama Chat, part of the Demcast family of podcasts. I'm Donna Schwartz Mills with Kara Lee and Aliza Worthington of CrooksAndLiars.com. <laughs> and if you guys are listening on Blog Talk Radio, you need to know that we are moving to a new host on Buzzsprout. And uh, so you'll need to update your, your feeds. If you're listening to us on iTunes or Stitcher, nothing will change. Um, and we will give the new... Um, the new feed address when we are finished with today's podcast. Um, but uh, before we, and oh gosh, there's just so much happening in the news. By the time you guys hear this, Ukraine and Russia could be at war. Um, or not. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> because we don't know what's, what's going to happen there. But, it, you know, there was a very, very serious press conference, you know, this afternoon just before we went on the air. Yeah. And um, all the Americans in Ukraine are being urged to leave, like, immediately. And, you know, of course, the news, the journalists find the one or two people who refuse to leave. And so... Oh, of course. We're going to have that. Yeah. 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 But, so. um... Well, the warning is to the effect of, if you choose to stay, we're not going to help you. We're not coming to get you if... Uh, Right. Well, that's that, and that's a pretty standard warning for that this kind of situation. I mean, we don't know. We we have no idea what's going to happen right now with this. But um, you know, it certainly makes it gives the news media something to report on. <laughs> I guess you know, other than Trump's toilet habits. Yes. <laughs> you know. And, and I mean that in eating documents. I mean, tearing you, eating. But them. that again, this was this this was told. You know, the the eating paper thing was was made known in in 2018, and, yep. and the the media had no interest in it. Well, right. because Omarosa was the one who told that story, and you know, right? It, we don't we don't listen when a black woman talks, right? I mean, well, not, I don't not think that not that I don't not that Omarosa was, is the most reliable narrator. That's anyway, what I'm I think saying. that that had a lot to do with it. You know, I think that had more to do with it than yeah, that yeah, she but, a black but, woman. Yeah, it, it, the 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 true, you know, she she turned out to be, you know, she wasn't lying. <laughs> No. <laughs> or put it this way, it, you know, it's not it, it's not that far fetched sounding, right? No. You know what she was saying. No, right. But you think about how he was so obsessed with low flush toilets, and now you know why. <laughs> you warn me. <laughs> she waited until waited you until had I the had mouthful, mouthful, didn't she? <laughs> He was obsessed with that. Yes, I know. I know. Don't. <laughs> Not on my keyboard. No. <laughs> Not on this. Oh. Um, yeah, he really did have a thing about that. Yeah. And we just we just thought it was because he took. Which massive regular dumps not that he was not dumping. document ones not not document dumps you know right. oh god this whole conversation is gross <laughs> dumps. um we did not have a show last week because instead of getting together virtually like this the three of us met in dc and hey. you know got to you know Take our pic, take selfies in front of all of the, uh, all the big, all three uh, branches, all three yeah. branches of government. That's right. And, uh, <laughs> as we passed the um, the historic building for the National Archives, we were all remarking on what heroes they are. Yes. And, you know they have been in this uh, investigation mm -hmm. to to get the records. And this was the night before we learned that 15 boxes had to be retrieved from Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The, and some of them marked top secret. 
yeah. which is yeah. just amazing, right? I mean, imagine just for a minute if Barack Obama had shipped off 15 boxes and half of them were marked top secret. Can you imagine? Heads would have exploded on Fox News would have been leading with it. They would have been breaking into whatever their yeah. stories were. Yeah. Hillary Clinton had a handful of emails that were marked classified, you know, in after this the trove fact, of some tens, of them, though. Right, tens of I thousands mean, it's of not emails. Even, yeah, I mean. And, and I don't hear anybody shouting, lock him up for this. Right? You know? Well, it's, I hear a lot of people on our side shouting, lock him up, but no, nobody. But it's not amplified. Nobody on you don't Fox hear News. it. Yeah. Right. You don't hear it. You know, we are drowned out. Instead, what we hear are inflation and Biden inflation, which it isn't Biden inflation. And we mm -hmm. hear, oh, we shouldn't have given out so much stimulus, which we had to do because remember how far down the economy was? Um, and that's not true either. I mean, it's it's CEO gouging is what's going on right now. It's go. it's corporate right, price gouging. Yeah, between yes. between CEO pay and and uh, worker pay. Yeah, it's not just CEO pay. I mean, they're they're getting on these earnings calls and they're puffing up and going, you know, wow, our earnings are up by forty seven percent. Yeah, and why? Because they jacked prices and called it inflation. Yeah. So yeah. And they're perfectly willing to do that because tax cuts. Right. right. Yep. In fact, you know, you could make the case that these CEOs are complicit with an authoritarian plot to take over the government. They are. Just because they do not want to pay more in taxes. Yep. Money talks. Yep. You know. Money talks. And so. it is a very, very sad moment for our democracy because all the talk that we got growing up about how you know it's kind of a civic religion to, to mm -hmm. worship our democracy mm -hmm. and these guys only care about their bottom line bottom it's line also part of our religion you know our national as it were i mean if we're going to stick with the religion um, framework the, to, to worship capitalism. Mm -hmm. And this is run, you know, capitalism run amok, twisted, perverted, you know, turned into serfdom in a lot of ways. This is just, you know, an absolute, like, you know, just a destruction of the middle class over the last, you know, several decades that you know the people at the top have been just gleeful in you know running away with their their billions and You're starting uh, to sound like a bernie supporter eliza don't believe <laughs> it <don't you> dare. <laughs> but that's the truth though i mean when no, i mean what bernie, you can't i mean when <laughs> when no it's the truth though god, god uh, you know listen bernie can kiss my fucking ass and you know it you know i hate that guy but that doesn't mean I'm okay with, you know, like with, you know, Bezos and his fucking, you know, his his gigantic space penis going out and, you know, like, you know. He and where, Elon where, Musk can lock to themselves they, as far they as they I'm can concerned. They fuck themselves. And meanwhile, yeah. Do Dolly Parton is out here funding vaccines. And, right. Uh, the, and funding um, people's college educations. You know, that doesn't right. make me a Bernie supporter. That makes me, you know, someone who supports helping people actually achieve middle class status. Right. And, and health priorities, um, you know. Which is what the Democratic Party is supposed to be about. It's what they are about, and it's 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 what Biden's doing, and they're trying to get this done on hearing aids. They're trying to get it done on insulin. They're trying. They're really, you know, the things that like normal everyday people need to be able to afford. Right. No, I know, and it's um. There was a chart. I don't know if you guys saw these charts today, that I actually saw them last night that were demonstrated who was most affected by the Omicron surge. 
right? So, and and the metric is hospitalizations and death, not cases, because if you're vaccinated and you get it, you're far less likely to end up in the hospital or dead, right? right? And if you're boosted, that number even is more critical. So literally the the vaccinated boosted people stayed pretty flat during Omicron. I mean, there was a, a little bit of a, a, a you know, a, an increase, but not much. But the, the ones who were unvaccinated went like this. Yeah. I mean, it was, and that is the direct result of right wing billionaire media right? Um, billionaire funded online and offline media hammering home that vaccines are somehow a violation of your liberty, you know, which is just ridiculous. It's yeah, just, it's, it's crazy. Bullshit. It's, 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 I mean, yeah. But now in red states, they are trying to get rid of existing vaccine mandates for childhood diseases. I mean, I guess they're interested in killing off their own. I don't know what else to say. And that sounds yeah. really violent and nasty, but that seems to me what they're trying to do. And it seems very short-sighted too, because like quite literally, they're killing off people who are gonna vote for them. Exactly. Like, I mean, okay, it's like, okay, care. you're gonna kill your base. They don't care anymore about winning elections. They only care about stealing them. Well, and here's the other piece of that, though, right? If you have to go yeah, follow the right, money. Donna, that scared that just sounds yeah. up my spine. But, uh, you, you, but it's true. You have to you have to follow the money on this, right? So mm -hmm. what is what does Coke Industries care if people die? They Not don't, either. right? Peter Thiel doesn't care if people die. Nope. I mean, for him, it's not a big deal. He doesn't care. Oh, he's never gonna uh, die. <laughs> so I mean, funding this kind of libertarian bullshit, hocus pocus you know, uh, let everybody decide and no public health standards should exist is, is coming from them. And it's, and it's basically propagandizing the people that would naturally, or the populations that would naturally be conservative, like ev ev evangelicals, you know, but the, how it, does it benefit them? Well, how does it benefit Thiel and those guys? Yeah. Cause they consolidate power. That's how. Right? The, the less people trust government, the more power the corporate people like Thiel and those guys have. I mean, I I mean they're out there. Thiel, by the way, you guys, has a company, or I don't know if he still owns it, but his first like sort of venture was Palantir. And Palantir was created to collect data on people. I don't think that was his first venture. I think that. Um, yeah, I think you're right, I, but it was certainly PayPal one of his. Was one of his first ventures. It's certainly one of his most notorious. Yeah, I agree. Right, he's got Palantir. The, the yeah. one of the things that is like most disgusting about Peter Thiel is that he and his advisors figured out how to hide his uh, investments, the profits from his investments inside a Roth IRA that was meant for the middle class. Right. So he now has basically sheltered investment of $5 billion or something in, in there. It's ridiculous. IRA. It's <laughs> nuts. A retirement account. Right. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's, that's whack. So yeah. essentially he paid tax on a tiny fraction of that money and then all of the appreciation is, is gathering tax free. Yeah, it's, right. it's gross. It's gross. So anyway, those those guys are the ones you have to have to watch. You know, like try to overlook what you know the Marsha Blackburns and people. Are, they're just servants. The ones you need to watch are the Cokes. And the, and I say that specifically because what's happening in Canada right now with the truckers yeah. is definitely related to at least Charles Coke and possibly Peter Thiel too. Um, because he, at, Coke has been putting money into Canada and specifically Ottawa for decades. Oh, wow. I mean, I was watching this 15 years ago. I was watching it um, and just, you know, like, why is he paying for that? And then you realize the oil sands and all those kind of things are up there. And that's, you know, Coke territory. So he has been propagandizing up there and not to great success, but... It doesn't. It didn't take many truck drivers. This is an astroturf effort. 
I'm sorry. It, yeah. You can count on that. I can't produce the numbers today that will tell you that, but I guarantee you the size of this thing, it is, it is astroturfed. It's not at all organic. No, and, yeah. it, and it is U.S. based. And mm-hmm. then, there, you know, if you, I, I've seen reports online of these bot armies drumming the frenzy up. And, um, you know, it, it's moving on to, to France, although they were kind of prevented from doing it in France, but it's going global. Well, yeah, I mean, there was, I, I got an email last weekend from a friend who said, you know, they're going to come to Washington, D.C., and it's going to be, you know, another basically insurrection. That's what the fear was anyway. Mm-hmm that was, you know, communicated to me. And I can't say that that's an unreasonable thing. I think that they're probably right. They, they are talking about disrupting the Super Bowl here in Los Angeles on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Although I it's saw something. here is already not. It's already <laughs> shitty there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I saw something that, uh, like, I, they're using Telegram, I think, to organize. And so I, I follow somebody who posts things from Telegram and, Somebody said, no, we're not starting in L.A. because the traffic's too bad or something, you know, like there's <laughs> also notice the difference. Also, there's <laughs> more ways in than they could. They don't have enough people to block all the ways in to L.A. That's I mean, it's one thing to block one bridge between Canada and Detroit. It's, you know, it's another thing to block all the ways in in L.A. It wouldn't be done. I don't it think it's possible. A lot more truckers. Than, and, than right. Than and. I mean, the Teamsters came out yesterday and condemned everything, right? I mean, they, they're like... Oh, good for them. But yeah. thanks to deregulation, most truckers mm-hmm. now are independents, and they are not part of the Teamsters. Is that right? Yeah. Right. Deregulation definitely changed. But the, the other part of that is that because they're independent, they're not really interested in losing the revenue that they would lose. That's why I'm telling you, this effort is astroturfed. These guys... Aren't going to lose them, right? They they are not going to lose the money that they would otherwise make, especially not right now when they're getting bonuses because of the supply chain issues. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's why it, it's 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 not organic, and it's not shared by many. I mean, that's the thing. These are really teeny tiny groups of people. They're ninety percent of truckers are vaccinated. So, you know, especially the, the Canadian ones. Right. I mean, the whole idea of th- this being some kind of anti vax thing is ridiculous anyway. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, it's stupid. Yeah. Not that these guys are ever smart, but yeah. <laughs> you know, we veer from one stupid news story to another. Right. And it's very difficult to focus on what's really important. And I think that's why the work of the January 6th committee is so important, because they have been focused. They've got three teams of investigators. They are working as we speak. They continue to break news Mm -hmm. that um, if they weren't doing it, the journalists out there don't seem inclined to want to do it. You know, the whole well, thing Unless they've about, got a book, you know, they've got a um, book coming out, maybe. They right. might just wait until the book comes right. out to let us know. Right. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know this about, about the, the, the papers and the toilets because it's a tidbit on a Maggie Haberman book coming out in the fall. Right. You know, you think she could have reported that he was destroying documents. While you he think? Was in office. You if think. she gave, if she gave a shit, <laughs> right? But but <laughs> here's the thing: she prob- problem, I mean, she'd she probably would... lose her access to him. That would be you know right. not right. good. And that's, she's she's mis mis access USA. Right. Um, so basically, uh, Hillary's problem was that her fear of the journalists caused her not to give access, so they were tougher on her. You know, and honestly, though, if she had given them access, I'm not sure it would have been any different. They no, just I mean, hate they Hillary they Clinton. Hate they That's hate her. True. There has been there have been so many, so many stories on Fox about Hillary Clinton in the last 24 hours. Well, every time something is 
every bad time, for them. Yes, every they bring this, Hillary out. Every to, single to ever, ever since this break every about time. Trump, every time about because missing tried and missing call logs, the missing call mm -hmm. logs um, mm -hmm. from January sixth for Trump, and mm -hmm. these missing documents. Um, uh, there have there have been they have talked more about Hillary Clinton and might she run in 2024 on Fox News than anything else. I mean, there have been dozens and dozens of mentions of it, according according to Eric Bollert, who's right. you know, the the press guy, right? Uh, that that knows all. Um, yeah, and, and, and no mention, uh, hardly any mention of Ukraine. Right. Right. Hardly any. You know, mention, of course, no mention of what's going on with Trump and January well, 6th. You know, they right. are some, we don't know exactly what deal Murdoch has with Putin. But we, you know, if you, if you look at it, we weren't paying any attention to Ukraine. And then Paul Manafort, who was, you know, involved with the pro Russian politicians in Ukraine, suddenly becomes like, a big person in the Trump campaign. You know, so Ukraine, without mm -hmm. their, you know, uh, they haven't been trying, the official government has not been trying to interfere in our politics. Elections, But yeah. they have been involved in our elections since 2016. Yep. And the whole thing, you know, the first Trump impeachment, that was all a plot with Ukraine. I mean, it was so off the wall. Ukraine, you know? Right. I know. <laughs> it's like, okay. But yeah. Who wants Ukraine? And, and they are a pawn in this geopolitical game that he's playing with us. Right. Yep. And I'm and surprised he's still playing it. Well, why? He still wants them. I know. But, well, I mean, I know he still wants them, but he, you know, he... He thinks he's dealing with the same kind of person but, in but office. His, but what he has, his, his misinformation, his disinformation, his... Yeah, I his realize that's all him, but Cyber I mean. tactics have been wonderfully effective. Yeah. And they don't cost much. I mean, his army oh, is a fraction of Oh, it costs hardly anything. Ours, right? And yeah. yet he is able to control what is going on in well, the narrative, at least. Right. And it's surprisingly easy, and that's what's infuriating. I agree. How it is infuriating. It is to manipulate public opinion in this country. I mean, I remember a time when, you know, you don't listen to the Russians. It's propaganda. It's, you know, and you, I, I don't know if you saw that one cartoon that showed the Cold War then and the Cold War now. The Cold War then you had a donkey and an elephant facing off against the Russian bear. Right. Cold War now, you've got the elephant and the bear together facing off against the poor donkey who's right. trying to hold on to democracy. Yeah, I mean, that's right. And and let's not let, you know, the media outlets off the hook. There's, you know, I mean, even with the deplatforming of One American News Network, finally, AT&T, <laughs> <laughs> right, um, it's still... Who gave you know, them seed money in the first place. Who exactly. For O A N N. Right. The and the monster that it became. Yeah. I mean, they still have Fox News. You still have uh, Newsmax. Tucker's the worst of them. Tucker. You still have Breitbart. Right you have. Yeah. yeah I mean. Bannon. Yeah. Bannon's right. Who, who, who wants nothing more is, than to see the destruction of of this government? He, he's an right. Anarchist. And he is actively working at it every single day. So when you talk about manipulating public opinion, you have Putin and sitting on the side with Fox News and Newsmax and One American News Network. And, you know, all of them are working together yeah. to uh, basically, in my opinion, try to destroy the country. Yeah. You know? And I don't know what, what their end game is, whether it's a constitutional convention or, you know, something so that gives them absolute control, you know, over the, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I do know Democrats need to start actually having fits over this stuff. Like, why am I not seeing the DNC just losing their shit over everything that's coming out? 
And I'm not talking about Biden. I'm talking about politically now. We're in the midterms. Where's the DNC? Where's the, you know, the DNC or DCCC? All these, you know, the they ought to be screaming right now about what's going on and, and making noise so that we can change the narrative. Because it's not just the news outlets on the right. It's the, I mean, a perfect example is, is Tom Cotton basically starting a rumor that Biden administration was going to give out crack pipes, crack pipes. right? Which is an obvious racist, you know, it's, it's a dog whistle is what it is. And, um, you know, but it was based, the Washington Free Beacon just made shit up, basically. And, and, ran with it. and not just them, right? The next thing you know, Fox News is flooded with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, suddenly crack pipes are a thing. I couldn't like, <laughs> I was like, what is happening? Anybody Why are we even smoke crack anymore? I don't know. But, you know, it's it it doesn't matter because what it was was into I mean, it was like welfare queens. Why? It's the same kind of thing. Right. It's meant to be racist. It's meant to it's aimed at the black community. And it was, it, it, and it was intended to divide the black community because, obviously, for, away from Biden, because most of the black community is like, what the hell? I don't want crack pipes being given out. You know, I mean, they're, they're so, and and but it got all the traction like for two full days before it was finally like, oh wait, that's not happening. And it took Jen Psaki came basically coming out and saying. There's nothing in this that suggests that we're giving out crack pipes to anybody. And then some crackpot uh, from the Inquirer writes a, a op-ed that basically says Biden caved to right-wing media and won't give out crack pipes. What is wrong with people? <laughs> I was like, Inquirer. not the National Inquirer. This was the Inquirer the with an I. The Philadelphia Inquirer? I don't know who it was. Like, I a, don't know. like a, a like an actual journalistic outlet? Yeah, it was an op-ed. But oh it was, I, I tweeted it. I tweeted a screenshot of it because I couldn't believe it. It was like, what the hell? I mean, so so now this person is arguing that we should be giving out crack pipes. Huh? I mean, what? I, I just don't understand people. That's like, crazy. shut up and go away. I, I it's, Yeah. So anyway. But it is a power uh, play. It is. This faction of people want us to roll back the clock to mm -hmm. a time when just white propertied men had the power. Right. And, um, you know, one of the things that we did on our weekend in DC was visit the African American Museum of History and culture and looking at how we got to where we are and especially the period just before the Civil War and the period after Reconstruction was just so familiar. Yeah, truly. So familiar. The tactics it, that were used then and the states where they're being used mm -hmm. are and the court decisions and the court decisions with with that Supreme Court of that time. Yep. It's exactly the same. And then to to put a punctuation mark on it, you had that decision this week by this Supreme Court to allow the um, unfair maps in Alabama, which needed to have an additional African-American district. And they said, no, nah, you don't have to do that until uh, 2023, you know? So this, this bad map that they have submitted is going to stand through the midterms. So, and to be clear, the, the, what the map does is it divides the African-American community into three parts so that they won't have any representation because they're basically fragmented into majority white communities right. so that Republicans can be elected in six out of the seven districts. Right. So, 
Yeah, I mean, it's a grossly unfair map. And Ohio tried the same thing, and their Supreme Court knocked it down. So did North Carolina. So, but Alabama, you know, went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court basically said, you know what? We're going to hear this case, I don't know, sometime next year, but we're not going to put a stay on this. We're not going to actually make you redo your maps. Right. Um, so the which suggests... the conservatives yeah. made that decision with Roberts, of all people, siding with the liberals. It was a 5-4 yeah. decision. Yeah. And what is it that I hear? Is it rumored that Roberts now supports the pre-clearance that he gutted? It's a little late for that. Yeah, I, but, I mean, I, I mean, think that oh he's my God. he's trying to rescue his his legacy. His legacy. Yeah, well, right. And he doesn't get to do that, you know. Like now, it's it's safe for him to act like he he cares because he knows yeah. he's going to be outvoted. Well, he like no he can go around now him. saying, you know, oh, this is so terrible. You know, oh no, look, I didn't vote for this. Th this dismantling of democracy. In the meantime, you know he thinks people will forget and a lot of people will forget because i mean shit you know history is can you, you know how roberts remember? could rescue his legacy he could resign right. he could resign and get another liberal on the court yeah, right that, but he's well, not going to i mean that. but that'll only give us four <laughs> still yeah but he it would give also it would give uh, a liberal the chief justice yeah right right oh. seat right. and oh, that right. roberts okay. leaves then biden mm -hmm. appoints a new chief justice so that would at least be shaping the court in such a Can way. Imagine Chief Justice Sonia Sotomayor. Oh yeah. Okay. So you don't you don't appoint you would appoint chief. The president gets to appoint which one ascends yes. to chief justice. Right. Or, or I mean, in Robert's case, right? He the vacancy came open and Bush nominated it, him and also designated him as chief justice. Right. Okay. So right. yeah. Do so, you guys remember when Scalia was our worst nightmare? <laughs> you know, and the thing is, having listened to a bunch of Supreme Court arguments, uh, at least with Scalia, he made some sense. Like, yeah. I didn't agree with him at all, but Arthur he, Margo. yeah, but in arguments, he at least made some sense. He wasn't yeah. just, like, if you read Kavanaugh's um, ruling in this Alabama case, Nothing makes any sense. Like it's just intellectually dishonest, start to finish, and and I, I'm like, well, and Gorsuch, Gorsuch is off on his little tangent, right? And um, I mean, the only yeah. thing they agree on is being racist, yeah. and yes, I'm going to call them racist. And if they don't like it, that's too bad because I mean, I know that conservatives all whine and cry when they get called what they are. But that's what they are. So who was it? Oh, it was uh, Ron Johnson had a hissy fit yesterday in in the hearing for there was, I don't know. Was oh, he another one? He had another hissy fit? Did yeah, he, he had an apology. What is his yeah. fucking problem? Yeah, he demanded an apology for the nominee whose name I don't remember, basically speaking the truth about him, which is that he was saying white supremacist stuff, you know, yeah. and he wanted an apology and she tweeted that, you know, or she tweeted basically that he was saying white supremacist stuff. I mean, it's true. And he just had a hissy fit yesterday. I, I heard a recording of it and he was like, I can't support your nomination ever, in, but I accept your apology and have a nice life, you know? And it's like, really? Fuck right off, Ron Johnson. Ron, you know? I'm spending 4th of July in Moscow, Johnson. Yeah, that yeah, guy. that guy. Mm -hmm. All right. Can we call him a traitor? Would he object to that? Well, um, also, also, there is that uh, news article that Kara Lee showed us yesterday about Rob oh, yeah. Johnson. Rob Port, supposedly moderate Rob Portman and Mitt Romney. Right. Asking the National Archives not to certify the ERA, which finally right. has enough states. Right. right. Yeah. It. Yeah. Isn't that nice to Mitt Romney? There. Uh, d yeah. Don't ever, ever tell me there's such a thing as a good Republican. There's not. Don't there is no, absolutely not ever. No such thing. Nope. None whatsoever. 
I'm, I don't, don't even tell me Mitt Romney has any kind of integrity whatsoever. I don't want to fucking hear it. Yeah. Well, and it, I mean, it's just so gross that, you know, like the ERA, which has been something that has been a goal since the, like I was in high school. Was a teenager, right. <laughs> yeah. And before right. That, and before that. Yeah. yeah. You know, and we it finally. Years to get it passed in the Congress. Right. Yeah. And it took forever to get it, you know, ratified. Uh, ratified by all the states that we needed. Now we have it ratified. And, um, you know, these guys want it not to be certified. And it's like, you know, fuck them. I'm tired of white men. It's two thirds, right? Two thirds? Okay. Yeah. Two thirds. But I would so dare say that some 30. of the states that ratified it in the 70s would change their mind now because of the way the Republican Party has turned. Because back when it started, it was kind of bipartisan that women well, no should backsies. have equal Sorry. rights. Well, no Sorry. You know? <laughs> yeah, and too fucking bad. And Schlafly. Ugh. Again, it's so easy to manipulate yeah. people. Well. She put out her scare campaign. Evangelicals, let's be specific. I mean, yeah. she aimed that at evangelical women. Yeah, she did. And, um, and they, they bought it, hook, line, and sinker. In fact... Yeah. My husband's actually teaching a class on how m easy it is to manipulate evangelicals. It's ridiculous. So, yeah. So she wrote a book, you know, convinced women they had to be submissive, blah, blah, blah. You don't you know? believe that, Carolee? You don't go along with that? Not on that, that. Yeah, not not in that context. I mean, I do, I do believe no, that, no. you know, women are <laughs> equals. <laughs> And fortunately, so does my husband. So it's okay. It's him. all good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> fortunately for the two of them as a couple, because otherwise, otherwise they wouldn't be a couple. There would be problems. <laughs> right. Yeah, it would be it would be super miserable for both of us. Yeah. So yeah, no, but I mean, and that's the problem. She went after evangelicals, and then from there we got to Catholics. You know, good Catholic women who are supposed to have lots of kids and basically not do much else. Mormons. I mean, all that's that's where she. Yeah, right. And so that's where we are now. We're we're still fighting those same battles. I think we always will be. I mean, the the Puritans. You can read about the Puritans when they came. And actually, when we were at the African American History Museum, the Puritans played a big role in slavery. Slavery, yeah. Yeah, and everything. And the Puritans are basically the predecessors of today's evangelicals. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know. Yeah. It it was um it was eye opening. It was eye opening. It was. And I I mean he, like things that I learned was that you know like slavery wasn't always permanent. Not that that makes it right at all. Of course it doesn't, but it, it became permanent when it was cemented America. here yeah. in in the United States. Yeah, it went from being that temporary. Was an American thing. Yeah, exactly. Also that when um western Europeans were exploring and came down to the, the coast of Africa that they they treated Africans as equals. They did yeah, not they didn't see they didn't yeah. you know trading partners, business partners. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that was, was no... that was the one of the most eye opening things. Was that was the thing that I didn't know. Society yeah. that they already had there, and I'd always wondered about mm -hmm. that. About that. The other yeah. thing that, the history that, 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 that we that are we, not that. taught, and that conservatives yeah. do not want us to learn. Yeah. Right. You were going to say, Eliza, you said the other thing. Oh, that, that, you know, uniquely American, uh, adaptation of, of slavery is, is that it became generational, you know, that it yeah. became, you know, you were born into right. it. Right. You could be yeah. born into it. Not just that it was not, that it was a permanent right. thing for life, but that if your mother was a, you know, if your parents were slaves, you were a slave. Right. Just that easy. And it was, and that was largely because they stopped basically kidnapping people from Africa and bringing right. them here in their right. early but 1800s. The was, was curtailed. The slave trade right. itself was curtailed. Right. So they needed a new, a new source. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, I, I learned something your, uh, locally very interesting um, 
that there was a, an inter a correspondence, a regular correspondence between um, Benjamin Banneker and Thomas Jefferson, wherein uh, Benjamin Banneker is of interest to me just because I, I live literally a quarter of a mile from where he's buried and where his, where his home is. Um, at his home was, uh, you know, used to be his home, put it that way. The house is still standing and there's mm -hmm. a beautiful park right around, you know, around it. And there's all kinds of science programs and nature programs that go on there throughout the year. Um, and, um, and he, for people who, who don't know, he, he wrote the first almanac in the nation and he, he was, he was a clockmaker. He was an, an incredibly talented scientist, astronomer, um, and um, he had this apparent, the thing that I learned in the African American History Museum is that he and Thomas Jefferson had a, had a very interesting correspondence wherein he was trying to convince Thomas Jefferson that black people were, um, you know, had intellects that matched white people's. And uh, it, it was a very, I don't, I don't wanna like, do spoilers or anything like that because I, I mean I want people to go to the museum and see it and read it and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a very very interesting uh, correspondence that they have captured there, and uh, I, I had I had no idea about that. Um, no. Really neat. Um, and 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 Thomas Jefferson is every bit the white splaining asshole that you would imagine him to be. In the yes, he. <laughs> yes, um, he was. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was neat, and that's a little local thing for me. Yeah, I mean, there was so much in that museum. I Of everything we did, that was definitely, like, the one that that captured me the most. And it, the, the thing was, like, even you have a gut feeling. Like, for example, you know that black women drive a lot of things, like a lot of progress and everything. But when you see it with names and what they did and how and how consistent this is all the way across mm -hmm. history, it's really something. I mean, I had, I have such admiration for for them, you know. I took so many we pictures. I took so many we pictures of plaques of little, yeah. you know, like encapsulations. Mm -hmm. Because of it was dense. People was so much that material. She that I want to go yeah. learn more about these these women, right. particularly like yeah. you know matriarchal leaders in in, in Africa from you know, yeah the the fifteen hundreds fourteen hundreds, fascinating. Mm -hmm. It is. We were there for three and a half hours and we did not see close to everything. No, not even maybe half. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Half. Yeah, we uh, so, we, we spent mean, our time in the history section and we got up to um, the nineteen sixties. Right. We did yeah. not even get to the other floors, which dealt with, you know, cultural things and, um, you know, other things. Mm -hmm. You know, we were prime. We were just in the history section. Right. Right. We did manage to enjoy their um, cafeteria, their cafe yeah. <laughs> with the soul food and yeah. maybe the best fried chicken I've ever had. I mean, it yeah. was delicious. good. It was, it was delicious. really good. You know? Super good. Super good. Yes. Yeah. That was a real treat. So, yeah. yeah, I can't stress enough, and I think I speak for all of us, that if you do one thing in Washington, D.C., do this. Do this. Yeah. And, and we were able to get, we got lucky. We were able to get tickets that day. We were able yeah. to walk, yeah. in, walk up yeah. and walk in, you know. Yeah. So that was, Yeah, I was afraid know, we were not going to be able to, but we were. We got very, yeah, I mean, so. We got lucky. So it, it was also freezing cold in D.C., this yeah, so, I mean, I mean, there weren't a lot of visitors. We weren't there on a, we weren't there on like a highly, uh, right. you know, a weekend. What it's not like it was a cherry blossom festival, and there were tons of visitors. As well. Yeah, no, it was very cold, very cold. We came back to eighty degree weather here, but there it was thirty. So yeah, like nineteen. Yeah, it was very, it was very windy the first day. But yeah. we were, you know, that's why we were able to get the cheap flight. Right. <laughs> That's why we were able to get the the nice hotel room on the cheap. You know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so the Hay Adams was everything it was cracked up to be. You guys. I'm just Shout gonna out say. To the Hay Adams. You know? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> so and, yeah. Uh, if you are a Parks and Recreation fan like I am, the episode <laughs> where um, where um, Leslie 
goes to meet Ben in Washington and they go to a party and she runs into John McCain and all these other senators. That's at the Hey Adams. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and we were in the same space where that party was. Yeah, we, we were. That floor. Yeah, the top floor. Yeah. And we got some great pictures of in panoramas of Washington, D.C. actually at sunset. It was re- really cool. Which we will post somewhere. Yeah. We will, we will put those together into a montage and post it. Um, one thing that we guys have not, we have not spoken about this week, and I think we need to, is this week's Republicans in Disarray story. Oh, yeah. It started on Friday mm-hmm. as, as Carolee and I were boarding our plane, and we saw that the RNC had issued their proclamation <laughs> about the January 6th committee. And they said that what happened on January 6th was legitimate political discourse. <laughs> they didn't sure. have quotation marks around it. No, but I put them around. I know you did, but that the, the whole point is that they didn't. I know. They know. No, they, they, they seriously they, think they're that. They're serious. Yeah. yeah. They want that to be legitimized. They, yeah. They, I mean, or they want... You know, well, they're, they, don't, they don't they're afraid to they're afraid to say that it wasn't. Yeah, they're working overtime basically to, uh, you know, normalize what happened. Uh, at least some of them are. Yeah. I mean, but l- literally, as we got on the plane, those were the words that we legitimate political discourse. It was like, and it was all I could do to not <laughs> shout, what the actual fuck are they talking about? <laughs> I did, I did and they censured that. Kinzinger and um, and Cheney. They censured right. They censured they Kinzinger, Kinzinger Cheney, Cheney. Yeah. and then like social media blew up. And Ronna McDaniel, a- after the newspapers reported word for word what was in the resolution, Ronna McDaniel, Ronna later. Romney McDaniel, yes. the yes. next day, tried to walk it back. And, and say that the newspapers were lying because they were only talking about the people that weren't violent on January 6th. But it didn't really say that. No. I mean, it said January 6th was legitimate political discourse. And I, I'm sorry. Um, she actually quoted her own self, you know, the, the resolution that actually says that and doesn't carve out, like, yeah. people that weren't violent. It doesn't carve out the nonviolent piece. It's everything. So, and then tried to walk it back. It was stupid. Right. And then days after that, she said that she was upset that a friend of hers was being investigated because, oh, she was a fake elector who signed one of those fake elector. Uh... Oh, well then. <laughs> I mean. Is that legitimate too? Yeah, fake electors are suddenly okay because they're Ronna McDaniel's friend. I mean, the scope of what has been done, uh, you know, around the election. I mean, it's a wonder Biden's in office, honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at the these fake elector slates that they were told not to send, but they sent anyway, and are in the archives. I mean, I think they would gladly rewrite 2020 if they could. I mean, that's, and I think that's why so many people have been like, Trump will be reinstalled because they'll, you know, they'll finally get it right or something. It's re- so what Donna said earlier about, you know, they're basically just want to steal elections is right. Yeah. I mean, that's what they want to do. Yep. And if an intelligent authoritarian had been in the White House when this happened, yeah. it may have succeeded. Right. You know, it may have. If, if it wasn't just a bunch of conspiracy theorists who were in his ear, you know, somebody who really could plan something correctly, you know, well. Imagine mm-hmm. a, a DeSantis or a Tom Cotton who actually know what they're doing. Right. Yeah. You know, and didn't have like this gang of thieves around him like Giuliani and, you know, okay, Sidney so Powell Peter and Navarro. all. Those. Oh my God. Peter Navarro, <laughs> he keeps oh my going God. on TV and confessing to crimes. <laughs> I, right? And, and implicating people in the process of confessing. That's what's so wild. Quiet. 
he could just keep his mouth shut. I think he could. Barney Melber is just having a wonderful time booking. You know, he's always booked these kinds of people on his show, but now he's got one who is just singing. <laughs> he just... The, the best, what? yesterday he went on and claimed executive privilege and then Ari played a whole montage of times that he's waived executive privilege to, you know, crow on TV. Right. I mean, it's all whack. It's just, it, it's, yeah, so Ari Melber's, I, you know, like a cat with a bird, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but it's, it's, I don't know. I think I can't wait for the hearings is what I think. The, Liz Cheney has already set the stage for it with the op-ed that she wrote yesterday where she said, you're not going to intimidate us. Yep. We're going to tell the truth and we're going to lay it all out there. And when you was see it, it in the Washington Post, which where was that? Unfortunately, it was in the Wall Street Journal. So it was one of Murdoch's publications. But although, I mean, I guess that's that's almost that's good. You know, that, that was the audience she was aiming at. She's like, I mean, good for that. I mean, but I'm not I don't it makes get it the, hard for the rest of us to like to I want to read it. it because <laughs> yeah. And there's no way I'm paying for that too shit. expensive to get past. It's, yeah. What are they, not like even $30 the, yeah. a month. Something Even like if that. I could afford it, I wouldn't give them money. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Right. Me either. I'm about to go there with the New York Times, too, even though I'm supposed to subscribe to it for... I, am to, right, I feel the same way. <laughs> I, I mean, that they sent out a tweet today that just absolutely made my jaw drop on the floor, the where they Asian basically... Americans, yes. Americans? That yeah. was last night, was I thought. Oh, yeah, well, I saw was, it this morning. Yeah. So. It, it, yeah. Disgusting. Disgusting. Yeah, Anti-Asian... Where they claimed that Asian Americans are overrepresented. Overrepresented at the Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. I had to read that several times yeah. to actually yeah. believe that I was seeing what I was reading. And I, I mean, it, it's past the point where you can blame, uh, you know, all of this on, um, you know, some social media intern. No, or they, or there's too many either. instances of it. it it's yeah. too. It's too intentional. It's intentional. Right. Right. So. They are um, of the philosophy. Of there's no such thing as bad publicity, I guess. Because it, it you know, I, I am not ready to give up my subscription to the New York Times because they also still do good journalism. In other areas, it's their other political areas. journalism that's yeah. terrible. The but they do some good things. destroying the country. Yeah. <laughs> But there are other things that they do that I just feel like I still have to support them because we need more journalism, not less. Well, that's true. I mean, I, w I would rather, I, w I would say, you know, I'd rather support local journalism, but I mean. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I still subscribe to the Los Angeles Times. Yep. Yeah, and, and, same. I, and the same with the Baltimore Sun. And and yes, yeah. you were right, by the way. I, I took a little detour while, you know, about half while you guys were talking about something else and looked up the, you know, the Inquirer. And it, it was in the Philadelphia Inquirer that um, that guy was from the Philadelphia, that that uh, horrible op-ed on the crack pipes was. Oh, really? Yeah, that was Philadelphia Inquirer. Wow. I'm sure Will Bunch had something to say about that. I hope it's so. Wonderful in the Philadelphia Inquirer. I know. Yeah, I love him. There. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's that is something else. <laughs> oh man, that I I just saw red when I read that. It was awful. Yeah. Anyway. So we have a few minutes left. Um, and we've talked about most. I just checked the rundown. We we touched about almost everything that was on it and you know I'm very mm -hmm. proud of myself that I waited until 50 minutes in before I looked at it oh good for um, you <laughs> we should end on a light funny note ridiculing a Republican of choice and oh. I don't know how we can get through this week without discussing the gazpacho police <laughs> <laughs> I was like which one are you going to choose how are we going to there's, there's so many. There's so many. Marjorie Taylor Greene is a perennial. Clan mom. Oh, she's yeah. evergreen, yeah. Evergreen. Oh, yeah. Um, 
Yeah. And yeah, did you know? So I, I, I was unaware that for them. Pelosi had a had a gazpacho police. <laughs> I will say this, you know, I, I Sarah Palin used to do this a lot too, yeah. right? And to some extent, so did Trump, you know, with with typos and stupid stuff. And she and loves the attention from this stuff. She she loves it. I mean, she lives to troll you know, and trigger the libs. So yeah. there was a ton of great, I mean, Donna <laughs> tweeted me and said I was wrecking the party by saying that. But, <laughs> but I mean, there was a ton of great snark on Twitter about it. But I'm thinking to myself, you know, she's just probably sitting back and happier than a pig and shit because yeah. this is exactly what she wants, you know. Well, speaking, all that. Of, speaking of Sarah Palin, she's yeah. in the news because she is suing the New York Times, who we mm-hmm. just had an argument about whether we should support or not, um, for a, um, an, an editorial they wrote that had some untrue statements, and she decided that she was libeled. And apparently she did herself no favors on the stand. I was reading a report. Oh. I think maybe it was in the Washington Post. I she saw some tweets about it. They all. got her on the stand. And, you know, when you are in court, you know, be, being a witness in court is not the same as being a commentator on Fox News. Right? You are, <laughs> asked, you are asked to cite, you know, facts. <laughs> so she Testify to the court. truth. I was Did harmed. she know that? And they said... How were you harmed? Oh, well, people did this. Goes, who did that? You know, and she could not. Couldn't, she couldn't name anybody, not right. one person. Right, right. And then she said, at, at, at some other point, they said something that she didn't like, and she was like, piped up with objection. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the courtroom, like, cracked up just like you guys did. And the oh judges God. had to explain to her that she couldn't do that. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry, but that's better than gazpacho. That's, that's really better than gazpacho, please. Segment, so. <laughs> oh, my God. I love this story. Oh. I love it. Oh I mean, can't you, you, you? I could see her, you know. Objection! <laughs> I can totally. I can see it. Betcha. Yeah, right. Oh my god. So oh, that's you know, so funny. And you know, and resorting she was to governor of a state, you guys. And I know. She was almost vice president. Ugh. I know. Well, it, it. I read a bunch of her emails from when she was governor, and they were just about as stupid as anything that you'd ever see anywhere. I mean, I did honestly. I think you can look at Sarah Palin as really the point where the Republican Party went off the edge. Yeah. Right. I mean yeah. that, like, when they nominated her to be vice president, the, it, it was an invitation to all the wing nuts. Come show right. their freak flag in public. But and the other part of that is, by the way, that that is a very cynical attitude that Republicans have toward women. Right, the women right. that they put up are generally stupid. Stupid, stupid. Yeah, women. I mean, you look at Marsha Blackburn, Marjorie Taylor Greene. You know, all oh, these people, Lord, all, of them. all of them. They're stupid. They can they can sing the party line, and that's the it. Ones, the ones that aren't stupid have no mm-hmm. spine. Right. Well, except for Liz Cheney. Except right, we'll Liz give Liz Cheney, Cheney spine she, points. She give, does have she, those. She, she has we spine points, her and she's not stupid. And she's, and she's not stupid, stupid either. And, but, you but know, I wish she else. would v- vote for voting rights, you know? Yeah, and same. A lot more for, respect for her. But, I mean, you know, Murkowski and Susan Collins, you know, are very wishy-washy. I don't, I don't think Collins is all that bright. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't. I, I think that she is losing it the way Feinstein is. Personally, oh, yeah, I I agree. And so. I don't know, you know how what? Old she There's is, plenty but... of stupid men in the party too. I, yeah, I raise I mean, you a Louis is Gohmert, no bright okay? Bulb. Yeah. Um, I mean, or a Chip Roy, or <laughs> Chip Roy. I don't. All the Texans. All the Texans. Yeah. Well, yeah. You guys. Alabama's not it. that smart. We're done. That's our show for the week. We can oh, argue done. over who the dumbest Republican is. There's next so week. many. Join us at our new location, mamacrats.buzzsprout.com. 
You can see us on our YouTube channel or find us on your favorite podcast service such as iTunes, Google, and Amazon Music. And be sure to check our Facebook page for updates. This Yay. is Donna Schwartz Mills saying goodbye for the Mama Kratz. Bye, everybody. Bye, 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 bye. bye. Mama Kratz, Mama Chat is part of the Demcast family of podcasts.